I'm going to go through the differences between a distillation and a reflux. Look at reacting ethanol each time. Now, if I do a distillation, what I'm looking for is I'm going to try and turn, as you can see here, the ethanol into ethanol. So if I choose to do a distillation of that primary alcohol, I'm going to turn it straight into the aldehyde in here. The aldehyde is going to evaporate up and then through this side arm here, it gets to the condenser. Now, if I turn the condenser on, it creates sort of a jacket, a water jacket on the inside here, which is cooler than the inside of the tube and it will cool the vapors and allow them to condense and be collected immediately. So if I was going to define what a distillation was in simplest terms, it's heat and the vapors are condensed and collected immediately. That means the aldehyde then through this receiver adapter down here is then collected into this small conical flask. Now I know I'm going to get the aldehyde because the aldehyde has got a low boiling point. So as soon as it's made under the heated conditions, and for instance here, I would use an isomantle or a hot water bath for this, not a Bunsen burner, because that might set fire to the alcohol. I know that as soon as the aldehyde is formed, that because it's got a low boiling point, it's gonna evaporate like that and rise up out of here, condense, cool, and be collected immediately. I wouldn't be able to get the carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid through this method because the aldehyde wouldn't stay in this reaction vessel, the pear-shaped flask, long enough to react. I would also need some more oxidizing agent. Now the oxidizing agent, don't forget, I've got acidified potassium dichromate. You can use sodium dichromate as well, but acidified potassium dichromate is ours of choice. It's very, very hazardous. And that will go from the orange to a green color if the reaction has been successful. You could also use this method for converting a secondary alcohol into a ketone. What I'm gonna go through with you next is why I might use a reflux instead of a distillation and the benefits of that. Hi everyone, so I've set up a reflux as well, similar to the ones that you actually do in the uh, first year of our course. Now for a reflux, I'm either trying to get a primary alcohol to become a carboxylic acid or the aldehyde, perhaps the one I just made in the distillation, to become a carboxylic acid. It works for either of them. It's just for the alcohol one, you need a lot more of the oxidizing agent to make sure you go all the way to the end. And you'd probably need to leave it for a lot longer as well to ensure the reaction had finished. It would still go orange to green, but obviously some of it will go orange to green because it's turned our primary alcohol into the carboxylic acid and some of it because it will go to the aldehyde. So we just need to leave it for long enough so that we can ensure that we've gone all the way through. So if you just have another look here, what I've defined a reflux for you this time, instead of a distillation, is the continuous heating of a sample where the vapors are condensed and returned to the vessel. You can see this time that the condenser is directly attached to our pear-shaped flask. I don't need the side arm here to have a separating funnel, perhaps to add everything. I can just chuck everything in at the start, along with the oxidizing agent and some anti-bumping granules. Now the anti-bumping granules will prevent against violent boiling. So we have to make sure just a few of them are in there at the base of the pear-shaped flask. You can easily get rid of them later via a simple filtration or something else. Now the condenser here is gonna make sure that this top part here is nice and cool. So it's safe to use in the lab. Now the condenser here is directly attached to the pear-shaped flask. So that means any vapor that tries to evaporate out of here is gonna be condensed and put straight back into the reaction vessel. So that could be the aldehyde evaporating, trying to get through there once you've put it straight in, or it could be the aldehyde formed from the primary alcohol as it starts to be formed in an early oxidation. If the aldehyde either way is then forced back into this reaction vessel at the bottom, then that means it's gonna stay in there and react to form that carboxylic acid. So when you're deciding whether to do a reflux or a distillation, you've really got to think, what do I want at the end? Do I want all of the aldehyde to continue and react to form the carboxylic acid, or do I actually want to make that aldehyde, in which case you would use a distillation like we looked at earlier? I hope that clears up the difference between a reflux and a distillation. Remember, for a secondary alcohol, you can do a reflux or a distillation. It tends not to matter. And the similarity between them both for certain is they use the same oxidizing agent, the acidified 
potassium dichromate. And you have to use sulfuric acid to acidify this, not HCl. But we'll get to that in the second year of the course. Until then, I'm going to leave you to it. Happy revising.